Well, hello everybody and welcome to part two in our little series here on Conva.js. If you're watching this, you probably have watched part one of our series in which we introduced the Canvas element in general and the Conva library in particular. We added the Conva library up in our script tag up here, up in our head tag. In our script tag down here, we created a stage, if you'll recall, which we learned is sort of a project, uh, a pointer to the project as a whole. We added a layer, which we learned creates and thereafter refers to a, uh, to a canvas element. So this is the actual canvas element itself. We learned you can have more than one layer if you like, but we're just using a single layer here. And of course, we have to add that layer to the stage and we always add from the parent. So it's stage.add layer and like that. And then in the previous video, we created a rectangle, which went like this. I think I changed the dimensions, but we gave it an X, Y, and fill properties. And these are pretty common across shapes, uh, X, Y, and fill. Uh, and then because it's a rectangle, we gave it width and height properties, and we get this beautiful blue rectangle that we have here. Not forgetting, of course, to add it to the layer. And final note, uh, remember at some point, in this case I have it down at the bottom of my code, there we go, we want to call the layer.draw method which will actually render the canvas and render those changes, or in this case those additions to our canvas. Okay, so in this video, let's go through a bunch of the other shapes that we can actually do here. And I've already gone ahead and typed these in here. Let's have, or let's take a look rather, at the circle. Now a circle, just like we said conva.rect for a rectangle, we say conva.circle for the circle. Like the rectangle, we'll give it, typically, give it x, y, and fill properties. And in the case of a circle, not width and height properties, but rather a radius. And I'm sure you guys can understand why that's necessary. Remember to add it to the layer, of course. And of course, and just to, not to beat you over the head with this, but if we comment that out here, we see that it, does indeed disappear. It uh, hasn't been added to the layer. Okay, so add that back on there. Let's talk about a ring. Yeah, you can draw a ring. We say conva.ring, which looks like a donut to me. I would have called this a donut, not a ring, but they didn't ask me. So x, y, and fill properties, of course, right? And then not one radius, but two, inner and outer radius. And you can play with these values all you like, of course. Make that a little narrower here. I don't know if I like that, but let's keep it that way. Okay, star, yeah, you can draw a star very easily in Canva by instantiating a Canva star. X, Y, and fill properties. You can set these, of course, to anything you like. I'm giving it a stroke here. And just like the ring, inner and outer radiuses, radii. Uh, now, you may not think of a star as having inner and outer radiuses, but this, the outer radius is the radius of the circle, which, if we were to draw it, would just touch, just define the points of the star. And, of course, the inner radius defines how deep these valleys go here, and of course you can play with these all you like. In fact, let's try this. 15, and we get, that seems to me to be more of an evil star, so let's go here. There we go, much better. Okay, Ooh, and if we set to 35, we get a real puffy, cuddly star. Do you like that better? All right. Uh, all right, very good. I'm going to skip over some more shapes here. There's a wedge, which is kind of like a kind of like a slice of the pie, as it were, slice of the of the circle. There's the same thing called an arc, which is like a slice of the donut here, as it were. And I'm going to wave my hands at these for now. I'll let you guys go to the documentation for that. But let's do spend a little time on the line, which we see here at the bottom. Because, yeah, it turns out you can draw lines in Canva very easily. X and Y properties, of course, we're going to give it no fill property on a line, right? Because geometrically, the line cannot really have anything inside it. There can be nothing to fill. It is only stroke, and we're giving it a stroke of purple. Now, for this horizontal line here, we're giving it a points property, which is an array of a minimum of four numbers, 0, 0, 200, 0. What's this all about? Well, take a look at our line. And uh, let me try something. Oh, I can do that. Look at that. That's very nice. Okay, so we any line, any geometric line, is going to have a start point and an end point, right? And if we want our start point to start from these x, y coordinates, which these are, we pass in 0, 0 as our first point. This means start it at an x offset of 0 and a y offset of 0 from our origin point, which is these right here. Typically, 99 times out of a million, you'll be setting these to 0, 0. And if we want our line, as we do here, to stretch 200 
pixels in the positive x direction, we pass in 200 and 0 y offset, so it's a horizontal line, uh, then OK, we're all set, 0. And we can see if we play with these numbers, we can make it a little longer and like that. But And I just moved it up, didn't I? I'm going to do that. There we go. OK. No, I didn't. That was the thing. OK, anyway. Now, and you know what? I don't like that. Let me scroll back up. Zoom back out. There we go. Now it turns out we don't have to stop at simply two lines. By adding more points, or two points rather, by adding more points to it, let's say 100 minus 150. If I did this right, this should be kind of a point right up here. And if we do that and save, then we now have a line, as it were. It's sort of a line with a bend in it with a start point, right? Let's move back here. A start point, a midpoint, sort of an elbow, a line join, as it were, and then finally an ending point. And now that we do that, it looks suspiciously like we're on our way to building a triangle, doesn't it? Because it turns out that Conva does not give us a Conva triangle sort of a class. This, using the line, this is how we do a triangle. Now you might be tempted to close off that triangle to add 0, 0 again. But let's try that and see what happens. Well, it almost works, but if we come in here, you know what, let's increase that stroke width so what I want to show you is easier to see. Lo and behold, this ending point here, the two, the very start and the very ending points, they do in fact come together, but it's different, isn't it? They're not coming together smoothly. They're not joining properly. So instead, you see, this is not how we do it. Instead of adding the fourth point like this, let's simply set the close property to true, and that will, as it implies, as the name implies, sort of close off the shape and bring it, and now it is in fact a closed shape, and that means that we can in fact add a fill property like that. There we go. So we've come a long way from what started as a simple straight line. We now have sort of a connect the dots idea, and we're filling it in. And of course you don't have to stop with three points. You can go to any number of points and connect them all together. And okay, now I am gonna, I'm gonna show you something. When we, when we comment out that closed business, then the fill, even though we're adding it here, it no longer works. Let's do something else though. Let's look at those line caps here. They're sort of blocked off, aren't they? We can set the line cap singular, not line caps, but line cap property to round, I believe, is that it? Yeah, there we go, round. And now the line caps are indeed dutifully rounded off. Okay, great, wonderful. But this one here, this line join is a separate property. Line join round, we'll do that, then that gets rounded off too, and if I can spell properly, it'll work better. There you go, okay. So that's it. And so, okay. Well, that is nothing if not cool, okay. Next shape, final shape for this video, look at the text we have over here. Because yeah, it turns out, yes, you can add, and I made it draggable here, you can add text. You can add letters and words and sentences and even paragraphs of text to your page if that's what turns you on. Like others, here, let's do that. Uh, X, Y property here, okay. Uh, text property, of course, yeah, that's right, the text object has a text property on it. Hello world or anything you like, of course. The fill color defaults to black, as you can see, but we can also specify that to anything we like. We can set properties like the font size property, 24, for example. OK, great. Now what happens when we add a really long string? So I'm going to do something here. Instead, I'm going to jump over here to a little page I already have opened, get some lorem ipsum, and instead of saying hello world, let's paste that in. OK, now when we do it, OK, well, that's it. But the text now dutifully scrolls off the edge of our canvas here, doesn't it? And that's probably what, and it's not lorem ipsum at all, is it? It's dummy text. <laughs> I just realized that. OK, anyway, <laughs> the point is it's text. Doesn't matter what it is. Anyway, uh, we probably don't really necessarily want that. So let's, uh, uh, we don't want it to scroll off into infinity. So let's set the width property uh, to, let's say, 200. Now when we do that, Setting a maximum width on that uh, forces it to sort of word wrap around in there. Okay, and having done that, we can now set the align property to something like center, like that, okay, or align to the right, of course, and align left is the default, which we don't need to set because it is the default. Okay, very nice. 
Now, a word of warning when it comes to using, uh, to putting text up on your canvas, be it on a straight canvas or if you're using the Canva uh, library here. If you're putting up simply, relatively simply formatted stuff, it's not too bad. But if you're, if uh, there's no easy way, even in Canva, for example, to set a to set a standard indent here. If we want the L to be over here, uh, you know, some number of spaces, or uh, to uh, to format the color of this uh, of individual words, for example, the way we could do very easily using HTML span tags and CSS and like that. Bottom line. If your formatting needs are not too stringent, you, then by all means, you can use the canvas, you can use Canva here. Uh, if you are doing a lot of what you might call more um, uh, complicated formatting, uh, then you know you know what, go ahead and use HTML, because if there's anything that HTML and CSS, modern HTML and CSS, are actually pretty good at, it's text. They do text all right. Having said that, if you're working in the canvas, on the canvas, and you want to put up some simple labels and stuff or what have you, then yeah, Canva text is your friend. Now again, we are going to wave our hands at other shapes here. There's a wedge here, as I mentioned a moment ago, arc, ellipse, in addition to other shapes that I'm spacing on right now. And another uh, one which is useful is image. Yeah, that's right. You can take a JPEG or a ping image or something like that and put it up here. And we're going to wave our hands at that here for the simple reason that if you look, I'm using, I'm not using a, uh, a server here. I'm just loading this as a, the, the reading the file directly and you need to use a server for the Canva image to work and I don't want to do that right now so I'm, that's homework for you guys I'm gonna let you go to the documentation and see how you do images it's not hard by any means but it doesn't work here for security purposes which I frankly don't agree with and which probably means that I don't understand them but anyway okay well that's it for this video please come back for part three in which we'll talk about event listeners and also editing shapes all right see you in the next one